Okay, good morning. I just uh, wanted to introduce myself very briefly. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Jessica Vargas. I am the mission coordinator, the ministry coordinator for the Center for Church Development. Um, and I'm here to you know, help and assist in any way that I can to help you um, fulfill your mission. We are here today with uh, Peter Wernett. He's from uh, Mission Insight and I'm gonna um, give him the forum so he, we can start our presentation today. Thank you so much for taking from your time for being here. Peter. You're, you're on mute, Peter. My apologies. It's good to be with all of you. Uh, I been, was one of the uh, founders of Mission Insight, and uh, I'm kind of getting ready to uh, to step aside and uh, enjoy my grandchildren more uh, going forward. But a pleasure for me to be able to share what I believe is one of the really essential tools for pastoral ministry. Uh, as well as conference leadership uh, in, in, uh, in, in sharing the gospel with people, of, of getting to know our neighbors, getting better informed about who are we and who are our neighbors. This is a ministry that uh, I've been part of for 30 years, and uh, I happen to be a United Methodist clergy, uh, was appointed by my bishop uh, over 30 years ago to begin a uh, working with congregations across the United States to better understand who lives in our community and what can we learn about them, as well as are there additional things that we could learn uh, about our, uh, our members as well. I'm going to share my screen. And uh, so let me do this. And I'm going to uh, go right to the actual platform uh, of the of the uh, of the Mission Insight tools, this is the uh, website, the uh, homepage. Here is where you uh, a client would log in, and uh, I know that Jessica has the uh, availability to assist all of you to get from here to here. So when you have a login account and you log into the system, this is the screen that will greet you. And so there are a number of buttons and I want, I'm going to walk through those. Uh, also, I want you to know that there is a document uh, that you can look at. Uh, it's available to you in the help section uh, following this as well as the recording. So you can go back and, and get some step-by-step -step assistance in how to use each of these uh, resources more effectively for your congregation. Historically, when people have talked about demographic systems, they generally have talked about getting a demographic report. Uh, and that, that would be the best thing to do initially is to go in and get some information about the community. Now that is still available, but I'm going to come back and I'm going to say that what we recommend strongly and that the conference supports is uploading your member file into the system. And the reason is it changes uh, exponentially the capabilities available to you to not only better understand who's a, who lives in the area that we serve in ministry, but who are we currently serving and where are we connecting with which segments of the population are we strongest with and where do we have areas that we could grow and connect with people that we currently are not connecting with. So it, it provides you a level of understanding that moves way beyond a demographic report. And this is where you would uh, uh, take care of that work. This is uh, the people plot load. There is a video, which I'm not going to use, but you would click on upload your people. If you've already done that, then we you can display them, which I will uh, uh, demonstrate in a bit. But you click on upload people, it turns blue, 
you then click on this button, it will identify uh, your church. You have logged in uh, as your church, then this, that will be the name here. And then you click on this tab and you can use a custom upload, but we recommend that you begin with congregants default. When you click on that, it will then allow you to click on this next button. So let me uh, minimize, there we are. So I'm gonna click on the next button. And now that shows you that you can also code each of the records that you upload. We strongly recommend you upload individual records. So you can see if you have different members of a household in these different categories, you can use this or you can skip this and just upload your members and be able to view them and get started. And here is the actual uh, template. So when you click, it says, here is the upload template. I'm going to uh, open that. It, it is an Excel spreadsheet and you must use these headers. They, you cannot edit them. And then here is where you, uh, enter the name information, and this is what you need to get started. You do not need to enter any of this additional information that, that is optional later. So the important thing is that you can, uh, if you have an ID number, you can use that. You do not need it, but you need name, address, uh, city, state, and zip. So that is the upload file. And in uh, almost all cases, uh, you can export that from your current uh, management, uh, church management system. Uh, currently, just for your information, there are uh, one third of all of your churches in the conference have uploaded their member files. Once that is accomplished, you then can see where those members are located. And I'm just going to uh, go into one of the studies uh, that's uploaded, uh, not trying, not gonna discriminate. If you see one that you might want, uh, holler out. I, I uh, am going to just do Faith UMC here in uh, Denton. And so we're going to say that's, this, that's the church we want. Uh, the legend will be none. We just want to uh, see where they are uh, located. And then I'm going to plot those members. And so now we're going to, I'm going to zoom in to Denton. And if you were logging in as a member of Denton, uh, you would then have, it would take you directly to your church. And so here we can now see where our members are located in relationship to the uh, congregation, to the church location. Now, once we're here, you then have the ability of not only getting demographic information for the area where we would go to demographics, is you can run any of these predefined reports but there is a unique report called a comparative insight. And what I'm going to do just for demonstration is I am going to create a custom shape and I'm going to uh, create that on this side of the uh, interstate. And so I'm just going to, for demonstration purposes, is just come over here come down and, and uh, create a custom shape. Take notice, I'm just moving my cursor, double click, and now I have this shape that I can, um, can create information on. So I'm going to go back to my demographics and I'm going to select a comparative insight report. I wanna show you this and then we'll look at a demographic report. 
But this is the kind of, of analytics that are available to you once you have your members uh, integrated into the system. There are over 5 million records from churches that we have. So there's the area we're looking at. And what does it tell us about the area? It says that we have 248 of our members uh, living in 110 households. That's why you want to uh, upload each individual. And we in an area that has 34,000 uh, people living in 11,000 households. In the area, there are 50 of these unique socioeconomic uh, lifestyle segments called mosaic in the system. And we have our, uh, our members, our 110 member households live in 17 of the 50. So we are represented in 17 of these 50 that are present in the area out of a total of 71. The first section just provides some highlights of where we uh, are overrepresented or underrepresented in these categories. And because the Mosaic system is built at a nine digit zip code, we can compare our household locations to the locations of all of the households in the area we are analyzing. So in this polygon, uh, the highest group would be, would have a head of household age 51 to 65, 30%. Uh, in our congregation, uh, they would be represented by their segment, uh, which would indicate it's 33.5% of our members would correlate to that particular category. The index is very helpful because the um, equal correlation is 100. So if it's over 100, we're overrepresented. If it's under 100, we're underrepresented. And just for your information, this uh, profile is not one we see in most congregations. Generally, we see lower indexes in the uh, younger age head of household families and higher indexes here. So this is just the opposite. So what's the story? What's the message uh, that it's communicating with us? So we can see then uh, these different individual categories the, that are available. I'm not gonna spend time uh, going through them all because of our time element, but I wanna show you the second section. Here is the 71 uh, segment classification system, and I'll show you the workbook for it, that now gives us correlations of who actually are the households that live in this area. We're looking at a real report for this congregation. And in this area, the highest number would be F22 and Epsilon Experian, who created the system, gives them a name of fast track couples. And this, so if we come here to the Mosaic Handbook, which I'm going to come down to, and we come to uh, F22, we will be able to see what are they talking about when they say that this, uh, these households are identified by, this, by these characteristics. We are, we are going to see that they are Head of household age 31 to 35, so that correlates. We're going to see how they like to be communicated with, and all of these uh, are uh, uh, under the definitions are available to you. Uh, what kind of lifestyle behavior are, do they have? What are what is true about uh, their uh, education? What kind of uh, household income do they have? 
what's their family structure tend to look like. And one of the key elements uh, of the system is length of residency. So for each of these segments, there is what tends to be the amount of time that they stay in one place. Now they may not move out of the area, but they tend to move around this group. The center line is the norm in the United States for all of these ca uh, categories. If the bar is to the left, you, they are, you are underrepresented in that category. If it's to the right, you are overrepresented. And if there is a number as there is in these three, that's time. So this group is extremely mobile. Now, what, what, what might that mean in regard to ministry when we are uh, trying to connect with them? Well, this church is doing quite well because 29% of their households are in this category. So they've evidently learned how to connect with people that tend to move around and are very mobile. Then they also uh, are doing, a, a, again, a, above average in all of these top four, uh, given their presence in the area. Now, this one, uh, which is 7% of, of the population, uh, they only have a couple of households. So it gives the congregation the ability to see which of these categories are we doing well with, and which ones are we struggling with? And who might we connect with in, that, in those groups? At the end of each of the mosaic pages, whether it's in this report or any of the other predefined reports, you have links to, to take you to the resources available to you. This, this uh, mission impact guide is being re- uh, edited and updated and will be available by the end of the year or the first of the, the coming year. And this application guide provides a link between this information from Experian and ministry application uh, suggestions. The other thing I want to show you uh, that's available in this report, and I'm only going to show you part of it, because uh, I want to respect the privacy of this congregation. But what it does is each of these mosaic categories have an income uh, level. And so we know that if someone is in an A04, as they have one household, their annual median income is going to be around $180,000. Now, this has a range of 25,000, so this is the center point. But what it means is that the, these top, these households in the A category are all going to be, uh, have incomes above $150,000. And so just these five, seven uh, households have this income of uh, $1.56 million annually. So you see these 13 households in B07, they make 120,000 a year, roughly 121. They're, those 13 households have an annual median income of over 1.5 million and so forth. So at the end, what the report does, it aggregates those numbers and gives you a very, very good uh, idea of the financial strength and capability of these 110 member households in your congregation. So this is not available to you in any other format except the Comparative Insight Report. So that's why it's important to see what that's all about. The other thing that you have available to you is if you want to look at who are our members that live in these in this sub area of a zip code, because when you uh, when you look at 
uh, data, you, you would have zip code data. So you would know all of your members that live in the zip code, correct? But you do not know who are our members that live up here in this corner of the zip code. And so you can, you can actually find that out. So I'm gonna to go to my shapes. I'm gonna to go to my custom draw. I'm gonna come up here, excuse me. So let me do this again. And I'm just gonna say, okay, we wanna know who are our members that live right here. Once I collect them, I then have the ability of coming here to this uh, people download icon, and I can download the uh, information in that area and find out exactly who are our members in that area. So this is great for a uh, better understanding if they might bring them together in small groups. Uh, do we have people that are, that are inactive? And here, as you can see, they coded those, uh, those codes that I showed you in the upload file. Uh, that th this, uh, these are visitors, uh, these three. And here are some members, and here are two regular attenders. So you have this capability of better understanding what's true. Uh, in terms of your member profiles of where they are and of what kind of categories they would be in. I could also run, I could come here and get their mosaic uh, and see who they're reaching. And not only can we do that, but we can turn on in the plotting section, I'm going to come here to what's called neighbor center. Yes, there we go. And I'm going to start this. And now what this is going to do is it's going to load all of the people that live in the area. And if we're doing well with the 22, I'm now gonna go search by that mosaic code and see where do these fast track families actually live in the area. So come back down here. And now I'm just going to plot those F22s. And now we can see where they are located. And if we wanted to reach out to them, uh, we, have, we would be able to identify them. We could go to our user assistant window in the front, and we could look at purchasing those mailing lists of those names. While you're here, though, you can mouse over one of these, and it will tell you who lives in that household. These are public databases that are uh, purchased, sold, updated regularly. And you have the ability now of more sophisticated tools to not only work with who we're reaching, but then how could we locate others of the similar household or different households that we want to reach out to? You with me? So this is called neighbor center. The other thing when you draw a custom shape, as we did here, there this little uh, box opens up. So let me see my shapes.
this little box opens up and here you could actually save the shape, give it a name and put it in your saved shapes folder and be able to, re to retrieve it exactly as you drew it at any time. So you have a system that isn't just go to find something one time, but multiple uh, searches. That's why we recommend multiple people in a congregation have user rights. The more, the merrier, the better for ministry. If you have someone in a meeting and you're talking about children, where are children located? Uh, which families would have children? You can go to the uh, tab in the plotting and we can look for that information. Children in household by age. So if we wanna see just uh, at least all of these ages, where do we have these families with children, we're now going to plot well, legend by. Oh, here's the one I wanted. Sorry. Needed to put that in. Here we are. Well, I'm, something not working. I apologize. Uh, I'll check on that, but that is that is uh, those that is one of the functions that you can uh, that you can do. For some reason, it's not showing up here uh, the way it's uh, designed to. So now let me come back to the uh, to the area for this church. And I'm going to also come to the demographics and say we would like to look at, say, a radius uh, or the, the uh, zip code. What's true about this particular zip code? So we'll go to our layers. Uh, I'm going to activate the zip codes. And I'm going to select this zip code right here. Well, well it looks like the system is uh, get is a little balky at the moment. I uh, apologize for that. So let me go back here to my zip codes and we'll uh, we'll just pick we'll pick this one. There we go. Now you can you can go in and just get the information for that zip code. You can run these are three demographic reports and these are religious reports. So we could run an executive insight if we want to look at what the demographics are. And, and uh, so you have these different levels of capability. So here's the, here's the zip code data. And one of the things I like about uh, this report, it's uh, thematic, there are 12 themes. But you can see in this zip code, look at the explosive growth uh, since 2000 and it's continuing up to uh, 2031. 
So you have this range of information over this range of time. It has racial ethnic uh, uh, diversity in it. You also uh, have a financial income diversity where by race and ethnicity, which I think is one of the uh, more informative variables in the system. So we can see here, given which uh, household type we are uh, talking about, we can see the differences in the income ranges for them in the area. Uh, and many, many times, you know, people have stereotyped images of who's making what and where's the, who, which, in, which households have a greater or lower income. Uh, you will find in many of these reports, uh, maybe some surprises in that regard. The other thing that I like to point out about this particular report, you can see education level, uh, what's true in the area in relationship to the state. Whenever we do comparisons, they're always to the state that the geography is in. So this is comparing it to Texas. Uh, and then here are the mosaics for the group. And you can see, look at the difference if you're doing ministry in this area compared to the other one. So all of these are unique to the geography. The other thing I like to point out is the generational uh, page for this report, because you can see that if a congregation is primarily working with boomers, silence, and the G GIs, you're looking at less than 15% uh, of the population. So what does that mean then for the future, which I know all, all the congregations uh, are struggling with or working with. And here again shows the trend lines for each of these generational groups. And finally on this report is uh, some information from the religious survey. This religious survey is unique in America because it was done at a level that allows us to tie it to the nine digit zip code uh, Experian mosaic system, which means you can look at this information at a localized level at the block group. And so these reports uh, are very unique to the individual geography. And so I would encourage you when you go online is to look at each of these uh, reports individually. Now, if we're also looking at this zip code, uh, we could run a thematic map. Let's say we want to know uh, where are uh, families, uh, families with children, and we can use each of these. So let's look at female head of household. <clears throat> In 2021, <clears throat> we'll do the census layer because that allows us to go down to the block group. And we're, you can then choose your color palette. I kind of usually like this one. And I'm going to say, create a theme map. Oh, that wasn't very good. Well, why that didn't work? System's not happy today. So let me come back. Let's do another uh, zip code. Turn them on. Take notice you can turn all these on. You can navigate anywhere. Uh, if, of course, with your local church. And when you log in, it'll take you directly to your church. So I'm just gonna to come to this particular zip code again and uh, activate this. Uh, and let's go, I wanna then go to our, uh, our demographics, our thematic maps. I did all these earlier this morning and of course they all work great. Uh, so now we'll come here, families with children, uh, female head of household, we use uh, this same color and we will do create a thematic map. And it is not going to do that for me at the moment. 
I apologize. So let me try and see if I can get this to work with opportunity scan because this is very important uh, to be able to uh, so let's do uh, overdue we'll do uh, racial ethnic let's look at Hispanic Latino and we'll come here there we go so I apologize for these uh, glitches but what now what we've done is this is called opportunity scan. And what it's doing, it's scanning this geography for the presence of the Hispanic Latino population. Uh, and it will do it down to the uh, block group. So we can uh, turn off the colors and we can see that uh, this is this is what's true in this area in terms of a thematic map so this is what a thematic map would look like but because we are using the opportunity scan function uh we have a an additional table available and so what the table then will give us information on where these top areas are. I see for whatever reason, this uh, uh, error message is, is, is coming up. I apologize again. But this shows us not only where they are, but what is the number uh, for the variable we're looking at. So uh, this block group here uh, is, is the one that has the highest presence of the Hispanic Latino population. And when the system is working properly, it will take you directly to that particular block group. I'm going to uh, pause for a moment. I've, I've gone through uh, a whole variety of these things. Uh, on each of these uh, tabs. But what I would like to do is come back and see if there are questions, uh, things that uh, are important to you, maybe things you've done in the past uh, that you'd like some uh, comment on. Uh, the, th the other thing before I, I take a question is this user assistant tab is on the in the help section. These are documents that support what's true. This is the religious study. This is the mosaic handbook that has the link. And uh, this is the mission insight user assistant that I'm that I'm uh, pointing out here. And you can see it is uh, as it's set up with sections for each of these categories that we've been looking at. You can download this, print it, and have it available as a resource when you're thinking of now, how uh, can I do that? So let me come back to... Uh, There we are, and get some feedback from you because it, it, it's a big system. And uh, again, I don't know what's going on with a couple of these functions, these error messages. If you get them, please let the company know. Uh, they're not supposed to be happening, I can tell you that. But uh, uh, go ahead. We have a, yes, we have a question from, uh, David, he was mentioning that he uploaded um, his congregational roster click plot and he didn't do anything. He's not sure what step he missed. Well, uh, say again, I'm sorry, I didn't quite get that, my audio. Okay, I have a question from David. He says that he uploaded uh, uh, his, the congregational roster and uh, click plot and it didn't do anything. He's not sure if he missed a step or, or if there's something that um, he missed or something that he did wrong. What church is it? 
Creekwood. What's the name? Creekwood. Creek Wood. Yep. Uh, let's just uh, take a quick look. You said you uploaded the members? I think so. Well, let's check here. Would it be C R E E K? Uh, yeah, it doesn't look like it's on there. All right. Uh, MI support can assist you in, in getting that upload uh, taken care of. Definitely. Sounds you just good. Need to contact them and they will assist you uh, ASAP. Yes, sir. Let me just check one other thing. Uh, I just want to look uh, here at your study. Creek, would you say? But it is. Free Allen would be it. Free Allen. There you go. Right here. That's it. Okay, so when you log in, you see this is where it takes you, correct? And now yeah. let, me, let me go to uh, your, uh, your plotting. When did, how long ago did you upload? Like literally while you were talking, trying to do it at the same time. So I'm using this oh. as my own self-help session. Okay, it, it it looks like it is working, but it's uh, it gets in the queue and it can oh, take, okay. you know, 30 minutes to an hour before it will display. Okay, cool, thanks. So it should be okay. But if, if it doesn't display, you know, within an hour, uh, contact MI support and they can definitely uh, troubleshoot that for you. All right, thanks. Certainly. Okay, we have a question from um, Oak uh, Road. It's actually a two-part question. They're asking about um, if we could hear two or four specific or detailed ways um, churches have used a mission insight that directly led to driving new people to visit that church. And if there's any research that might show that if churches the X, Y, um, Z on mission insight, um, there's a high percentage that will lead people an increase in new people visiting the church. So you're looking, they're looking for uh, information of how others have used the system? How, they, how it has helped them to actually drive people to the church. How it's helped other churches? Mm -hmm. Is that is that a correct assessment? Um, I think it's Pastor Jay. Uh, what they would they again need to do is, is contact Mission Insight Support, MI Support. Uh, they are in the pro they've been in the process of collecting uh, different stories and uh, anecdotal information on how this is being used by other uh, congregations. It's there are many many stories. I do not have any of those in, in, in my current capacity, but MI Support uh, should definitely be able to get that to you. Uh, very quickly. Okay, thank you. Um, are there any other questions? Anybody else who wants to um, maybe ask a question at this point for what he has covered so far? Hearing none. Okay, let me go back and uh, share. Uh, I want to show you a couple other things here. Uh, you're looking at Creekwood now, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, <clears throat> now let's say at Creekwood, uh, we wanted to know something specific re regarding this area. Uh, one of the other tools uh, that, is, that is here is the ability to use a travel polygon. <clears throat> and so let's say we wanted to do drive time. 
and I'm going to select a point on the map. So I'm just going to click on there and it's going to take me, uh, put a marker there at the church. And <clears throat> excuse me, I'm going to say next. And I'm going to say 10 minute drive. And I'm going to click next. And then I'm going to draw, it will draw a 10 minute drive from that location. <clears throat> now you have the ability of being able to go on and look at any kind of demographic. So let's say we're in a meeting and we're really not interested in a full report, but we do want to know uh, what's going on. So we can go to custom reports and <clears throat> uh, we, just, we just want some, uh, some demographic information. We'd like to know the racial ethnic uh, makeup. We'd like to know what is the mosaic uh, and the uh, age. And so that's it for at this point. So we're gonna come down and we're going to uh, generate just that information. <clears throat> and so it's going to go in and uh, create that information. Then here, if we're working with a group, we can enlarge it. And we can see within a 10 minute drive of the building, we have over 74,000 people. Wow. There's the racial ethnic makeup. There's formal schooling, phase of life. Here are the mosaics and we can see this flourishing families B07 is huge, 20% of the population. So once your upload is complete, it, you know, I think it's going to be very interesting. How do you distribute with your households across these top five or six? So it gives you the ability of, of looking at uh, information in that regard. Now, another way I like to use this particular tool is walk time. And the reason is what is true within a, right around our congregation. If I ask each of you, how many children live within a 15 minute walk of your building, what would you say? Are there 10, are there 50, are there 500? Well, let's find out how many there are within uh, 15 minutes of Creekwood. I won't put the person on the spot of what they think uh, and then we'll <laughs> go look, but let's just give that a go. So I'm gonna come here to my travel poly. I'm gonna do walk time. I'm gonna say, I wanna click on this address again. So there we are, say next. Now I'm going to go minutes. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do 10 and then I'm gonna do 15. And I'm gonna come and say next. I'm gonna draw those shapes. So up oh, there's your plot appearing. So it's processing. Oh, we can see where your strength is. Oh, wow. Excellent. So now let's just see what's true here. Doesn't, it doesn't look very dense. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to go to the 15 minute and I'm going to go to my demographics and I'm going to say, uh, let's just build that report and we'll do phase of life. Just use the same ones for now. We'll generate that report. And so within a 15 minute walk, we have 44 zero to four-year-olds, 284 
uh, ages five to 17. So you over 300 children living within a 15 minute walk of the building. Now it appears that on this particular, in this particular case that most of the members of this congregation uh, are here, big time, doing great with that area. So then we have this area. What might that mean for you as a congregation in regard to who you're reaching? So now when you draw, if I were going to run the comparative insight for this particular church, I would probably run two. I would run one for this area, which looks like it's its own unique area. And then I would maybe run one uh, for the rest of this area. Or I may run uh, a few more. I don't know why that's going away when it zooms out. But, uh, you know, I may do some something here. This gives you the ability of analyzing where we are by geographical location. You could also go out and do a huge area and, and get, you know, 80, 90% uh, of, of the people that we have plotted. So you want to also know what's true about the congregation as well. That makes sense? Any, any comments or questions about that? Um, we have a question from uh, Old Grove. Um, they're asking, uh, what does the church do with that information just shared about the drive time and the mosaics? I, I think what it does is it, it gives a church the reality of where do they want to target? What, what's their reach and what, where's their depth? So this congregation, it, it appears that the depth of this congregation is here. There's also strength here. Now you can keep going out and going further, but the other thing that I, if I were uh, in this congregation, I would now want to plot, I uh, would want to add the regular attenders into my system. And I would want to know of all of this, uh, all of this group, how many are regular attenders? Okay, because I think that's going to uh, that's going to give us a much better understanding of what is true uh, in terms of. Uh, there we are. There we go. Now they're plotted. They weren't plotted correctly. Because this is such a large uh, uh, congregation with a large area, you probably want to come out and do uh, a comparative insight where you collect at least 85% uh, of your members. But it's evident when you look at this plot that right here, is the strength. And then you have subgroups, and this is one here, and there's one around the church. So th there may be a half a dozen areas you want to analyze. I'd analyze this area uh, up here. And who are these uh, members? Are they, how active are they? What about the members here within this uh, area? Whatever the natural boundaries are, and that's where plotting the members makes a huge difference because people say all kinds of things. People, you might say, well, we have members that drive 20 miles to get to the church. Don't deny it. But is that where your strength is? You can, we can see here, it's right in here. And here are the real heavy duty concentrations. So I want to be analyzing them. It's kind of heavy concentration here, a little group down here in this area. But what does that mean? Who are they? And there's another church down there. So is it ministry uh, activity that's drawing them to Creekwood? 
So those are the kind of questions that I think you can then uh, begin to ask as you plot and look at different geographies. And remember, you can save each one of those shapes. Well, our time's almost up. Uh, I mm -hmm. hope this has given you some additional uh, understanding and interest in looking and using the system beyond just getting a big report, say a five mile radius or a three mile radius mm -hmm. or your zip code. Uh, you, you can do that. I think those are, those are uh, interesting and informative. But I think the system is a lot more informative when you're drilling down and you're looking at neighborhoods and you can extract who the members are and you can look at targeted activity in a neighborhood. They could host other members. They don't even know they live near each other, most likely. Uh, or a visitor comes. You add the visitor to the system and you can see, oh, we have three members that live you know, within four houses of that person. Uh, so I think it's those kind of activities in ministry that hopefully it uncovers for you. Thank you. Well, Jessica thank you. So, Owen? Yes, go ahead. No, I just comments from either of you. Yes, um, we'll have the video process, but I just wanted to give one last chance if anybody has any questions um, that they wanted to ask. We have a few more minutes left um, on the presentation. So if anybody wanna ask any questions, um, this is their chance. I have a question, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Hey, um, I, just specifically, how does um, Mission Insight help churches increase uh, the number of new visits to a church? How does Mission Insight help a church increase new visits to their church? Well, <clears throat> first, there's not a program that Mission Insight has that would address that. It, what we have, we believe, is a resource system to better inform you as a local uh, pastor or local lay leader within a congregation to become better informed of who's there and then what are the kind of activities given those profiles that might resonate or connect with those households. Let's say it says... <clears throat> people like to travel or they like outdoor activities. So what kind of things would you do in your congregation to, to connect with people with those lifestyles? So it's, it's extracting from the lifestyle data uh, what you think is important. There's no canned kind of quote program that Mission Insight has, has had in the past or at this point. Doesn't say that won't happen with under the new leadership at ACS Technologies. But for now, it's really to better inform the leadership to be able to better understand and then creatively look at how you want to approach that <clears throat> and, and, and what works best you think in your environment, as opposed to someone saying, well, here, I think if you do this, that will, uh, that will, that will work. So, so it, it, there's no kind of meta analysis of churches that have done this across the whole spectrum of Mission Insight. And, and listen, you know, it looks like, you know, churches that did a combination of these things, uh, we see that, you know, there is a correlation between an increase in, um, in, in visits, new visits or new visitors, because, you know, X, Y, Z. So here's a good place to start um using our our data not at the moment that's a, i think that would be a great analytic for sure and, okay. and i would say jay um the, the way i've seen churches use this effectively is is taking the data that mission insight provides and discovering oh we have this many uh uh single mothers or you know some 
aspect and then say, okay, here's the ministry we need to do. This is how we need to advertise. This is how we need to reach this demographic. Uh, or we're discovering, you know, the demographic, the demographic shifts around communities that are going, or if you're going to target a neighborhood, a new school or something like that, it provides you that data, but then you know, the expertise on what ministries would relate to uh, the various demographics is going to be contextual and is, yeah. and is kind of beyond the scope of mission insight in my experience. Yes. And it also is um, that all the report that he was talking about not beyond the demographics is also like you will get the information on how to contact them like how do they like to reach um be reached oh that's media, good point emails. so that's that that information you get you get a permission inside and like i said even within the same church not two reports are alike because no that, depending that, on the area that you that you're looking for that's how that's the information that you're gonna get that is an excellent insight no pun intended <laughs> you know well, thank um, you one of the other things that I think the system uh, can really be utilized is in the religious reports, the two of them. There's a ministry uh, insight and a religious insight. And they, they are surprising as to what people are actually saying when they complete a survey, uh, as opposed to what people think is true uh, in terms of, of religious uh, Things and the, and that is shown in the in the decline that's going on. More and more people don't, you know, sense they don't need an organized place. Uh, they have, you know, different things of their own. And so I, I think if we're going to be, if I'm going to have be an effective congregation, I'm going to need to come to terms with that and 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 communicate that that could be better if you're part of this congregation. You know, there, there are things that would be much, much uh, in your favor if, if you are, are engaged in a community of faith. So well, again, we don't oversell it. It is, you know, it doesn't have a, a, a lot of things that we might hope. Uh, but uh, again, hopefully it will provide you another tool to assist as you go forward. I, I think the conference has found it to be fairly useful or quite useful over the years, and we hope to keep it up. And the other thing, uh, the gentleman who just was speaking, these, if you have questions like that, uh, there's a, send them in to the uh, support team because they listen to the client. Okay, that's a, I'll, I'll do that. Thank you. All of you, it's one of the reasons as a former uh, founder and owner of uh, I'm pleased as to where it's landed in, in, uh, for its future because I believe they, they really care about the, uh, the, their client. Okay, well, thank you. Thank you so much for all of you for attending, for taking from your time. Um, I just wanted a few um, household items and want to make sure that you know that uh, the Center for Church Development has a, um, a YouTube page where we post all of our uh, recordings of these seminars. Um, you can just find us on YouTube. Um, the, uh, Reverend Lauren posted the, the link on the on the um, chat, but you can just find us by, you know, North, Center, North Texas Conference Center for Church Development, and we have there all the recordings for our, our seminars. Um, we also, um, they'll also be posted on the North Texas Conference um, page, it's uh, the ltcumc.org slash ccd, that's, um, they're going to be there as well. And um, the reason we also like for you to take this information and use it, it's like Peter was saying, people are not wanting to go and join into um, congregations or organized religions, so let's meet them where they are, and that's when we talk about our new spaces, um, finding new spaces where we can bring those new faces to join and be part of. And I wanted to talk to you about our Spark Tank that is happening. We're having a, um, a Spark Tank where we're going to bring people over. Um, you're going to be presenting your ideas, and then we're going to be granting. Um, uh, there are going to be some grants. We have up to fifty thousand dollars in grants, and we want you all to look into that. Check the information. It's on our website um, and the, on YouTube as well. We have all the information about the Spark Tank. Get this information that you just got on how to get, um, how to get into know the congregation and the people around um, your places. And then let's start designing those new spaces for the people to come and so you can bring those new faces and be, um, you know, 
um, created from part of the, um, bring them part of the church, but meet them where they are. That's, that's our, our phrase. So thank you all so much for taking your time for being here. Um, as you know, any information, any help, any assistance that you need, you can also contact me. It's uh, Vargas at ntcumc.org. And um, thank you, Peter, for um, giving us from your time. And uh, Reverend Roy, Owen, if you want to um, say a few words, last words before we leave. Just want to echo that, echo that. Peter, thanks for uh, your coming and be with us. Uh, and also congratulations on the work that you've done with Mission Insight and the thousands of thousands of churches that it's helped reach their community. And I know uh, retirement is around the corner for you and congratulations on, on that and for and for the work you've done to strengthen uh, the church and the, the work in the kingdom of God. Appreciate that. And thank you, Jessica for organizing this, coordinating that. And so again, everyone, it'll be up on our YouTube page very soon. And then it'll be up on the North Texas Conference webpage and the uh, CCD page uh, very soon after that. And so uh, thank y'all for being here. And if you need any uh, assistance with it, Jessica will be able to assist you. Her email is in the chat. You can send it to her and you can also contact uh, after you get your credentials and so forth, you can contact Mission Insight directly as well with their customer service department. Well, thank you all for what you're doing. Thank you for the ministry. Thank you for caring about your neighbors to take the time to learn more about them and how to utilize Mission Insight to connect with them. Know that we are praying for you, that we are grateful for your ministry and for your commitment, and we are here to support you. And please let us know how we can support you more. We'll be sending out a survey uh, asking as much. And if you can, fill that out and get back with us. So God bless you, and thank you for doing what you're doing. Amen.